Let's copy this into our notes. This equation. Now we need to balance this reaction. We're going to do this one as well because there's some new issues here. This is a harder problem than the ones we saw before. Now, um, you guys, uh, I don't expect you to have this me method memorized yet, so if you need to, you can go back and refer to the step-by-step -step method in your textbook. Um, how should we get started here? What is the first step? Send the, uh, assign oxidation to first. Now, actually, if you look at your textbook, you'll, say, you'll see that they actually don't have a step for that. And you actually don't need to know what the oxidation numbers are yes, in order to balance the half reactions. I, I can see how you can get confused about that because just for practice, I did figure out the oxidation numbers previous, on that previous one because I wanted to show you that the manganese was being reduced. Um, it wouldn't hurt to do that, but it doesn't help either. We don't need to know the individual oxidation numbers on the elements in order to balance the half reactions. And sometimes that can be confusing because then you start to confuse the charges on the individual elements with the charges on the species. Okay, so what is our first step? To break it into half reactions? Break it into half reactions. And that's the harder step here. Any idea what one of the half reactions should be here? The Ag plus the Cn mm -hmm. minus goes to the AgCn2. That's a good insight. That's tricky. I yeah, would because, actually... Because it's the same on each. That's a good insight too. <laughs> yeah, let's spell that out. I would start by saying, well, I know one of the half reactions involves this. Yeah. So... Here's the half reaction that involves this species. And now what starting materials do I need to put on the left-hand side to get this? Well, I know for one thing I need a source of silver. So I'm going to have to put this on the left-hand side. And I need a source of cyanide. So I know I'm going to have to put this, just like you said, on the left-hand side. I'm not copying the phases, because it's conventional not to include those in the half reactions. But I must include the charges. You've got to include the charges, because that's what the whole problem is about. Okay, so that was a very good insight that this is one of our half reactions. Oh, did I? All right. All right, so what you're saying is that I just blew it. All right. I was talking about how important it is to put in the charges, but I forgot this charge. So that's a good point. Um, I guess I, uh, this was fading into the board, so it's good that, it's good that you caught that, because otherwise all our work would be wasted. Yeah. Maybe, uh, all right, so there we go. Maybe I should write this as negative one so I don't lose that dash. Okay. So you're absolutely right. We have to include all those charges. All right, so that's one of the half reactions. All right, and how about what goes in the other half reaction? Oxygen and uh, we need hydroxide to add hydroxide. Clearly, we need an equation for the oxygen. Yeah. So. And now you're trying to figure out what's going to go over here. It's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be OH minus. Well, we'll see. And H maybe on this side. Maybe okay. Okay, so let's hold off on that for a second. We know we're going to put in O2 here, but there doesn't seem to be anything on the right-hand side to put here, so I'm not going to put anything for the time being. I'll put nothing here for the time being. So here's our two half reactions. Now, really, um, well, both of these were a little bit tricky, I think. Now, according to the textbook, what's our next step? Or according to what we talked about, what, what should we do next? Balance non H is the non H. That's right. So how would that apply here? No, it's going to be four on Z on uh, per chip. Now, we have, we have two cyanides here. So I need to have two cyanides over here. Now, remember, we cannot change subscripts, only coefficients. So I'm not going to put a little two subscript here. I'm going to put a two coefficient. Mm -hmm. But what about the silvers? Uh, no, they're, they're already balanced. Yeah. There's one silver here and one silver here. And remember, so the step we're doing here is what I've labeled step A. Balance the non-hydrogens and non-oxygens. So we should not be using any oxygens or hydrogens. 
in this step. We should not be adding any hydrogens or oxygens yet. We've got to do these things in order. So I didn't have to add any oxygens or hydrogens here. All I had to do was change the stoichiometric coefficients. Maybe I should have said, how do you balance the non-hydrogens and non-oxygens? By adjusting the coefficients, mm -hmm. not by adding new things to the equation. This step we don't do by adding new atoms, we just adjust the coefficients. Now, how would step A apply to this reaction? Uh, yeah, you're shaking your head, which is appropriate. There are no non-hydrogens and no oxygens. Non-oxygens here. The only thing here we have is oxygens, so step A doesn't apply here. So step A doesn't apply here. Let's move on to step B. What's that? And now we can O. I mean, balance O's. All right, let's start with this equation. How will we do that here? Add water. How many waters to where? And on to which yeah. side? The right side. Right. Now we have two oxygens on the right and two on the left. Now you can see the importance of really following the steps. I think that earlier you were guessing that we were going to balance the oxygens with hydroxides. And I can see why you would think that, because we're in basic solution. But the method doesn't work if we do it that way. The method only works if we do these steps in this exact order. So somebody smarter than us worked really hard to figure out what the exact right order is for doing these steps. Because it's not easy to get everything to balance. What they did here, what, what did they do that was so clever? They figured out how each of these steps works without disrupting the previous steps. For example, this balances the, step B balances the oxygens without unbalancing what we did in step A. And then step C is a way to balance the hydrogens without unbalancing the oxygens. Um, and if you don't do these in this exact right order, then when you try to balance one thing, you'll probably throw the other thing out of whack. And we have to do everything in this order. Okay. Yeah, that's right. The first semester of chemistry was I would balance something, and then right. I would try to do it again, and then I would mess everything up, and I just <laughs> There you go. That's right. <laughs> this is so frustrating. Okay. So again, at first, we might have thought we were going to balance these oxygens with hydroxides, but that's not the method. All right. Um, and how, about, how does step B apply to this step? Doesn't. Okay. Good. Because um, there are no oxygens in here. So now we're ready for step C. Uh, how would step C apply to this equation? Because there's no hydrogens. And how about to here? Uh, it is. Because we have hydrogens and we add um, protons on the left side, and it's going to be four of them. Four of them. Good. And it's good that you called them protons and not hydrogens. We're balancing these hydrogens with four protons four on the right and four on the left. By the way, notice that that messes up the charge. Now the charge is not balanced, but we don't care because we haven't gotten to charge yet. So you don't need to worry about messing up the charge because that step's going to be taken care of next. All we need to do is make sure we're balancing the hydrogens. Just like in step B, all we have to do is make sure we're balancing the oxygens. All right, um, uh, so this was correct. Good. All right, now I think we're ready for step D, which is the step, again, that people get the most confused about. Um, let's start with this. Let's work this out on paper if you need to. How many electrons do we need and on which side? Start with the bottom one? Yeah, let's start with the bottom. Now, I mentioned that we should work this out on paper, but what does that mean? Remember that the way to work this out on paper is to start by writing the original net charges. So, for example, what was the original net charge on the left-hand side of this equation? Plus four. Plus four. And what was the original net charge on the right-hand side of the equation? All right. Now that we have those numbers, it should be easier to decide where to put the electrons. Yeah, and how many do we need? Four. Yeah. So I really encourage you to actually write these two numbers down when you're doing step D. Write down the initial net charge on the left and the right before you try to put in the electrons, because this is the step I see students get the most confused about. OK, so we've correctly, correctly figured out that we're putting in these four electrons here. And again, you've got to leave this until step D. If you did this earlier, it would be get messed up when you added the protons, because that would change the charge again. So now let's do the same thing for the first equation, writing things down. 
if you need to, to figure out where to put the electrons. So far, so good. But uh, so, how many electrons are we going to add? Where are we going to put them? Yeah, that's right. You wrote down the right things. So here we have originally a negative two charge. Two times negative one is negative two. But here, this is just a negative one charge. There's just one negative charge on the whole species. Um, so we need an extra negative one. So there's a negative two on both sides. <laughs> 